Okay. So it's 103. This is the Historic Structures Advisory Board. We're opening the meeting, um, accepting the agenda as it's been written, no changes. And I'm gonna read the script. <clears throat> This is Mickey Rowland, uh, Chair of H, uh, HSAB. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Brooke? Yes. Angus? Here. Lucy? Yes. And Jason's not coming, and there's nobody else. There's no staff. Um, this open meeting of HSAB is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. For this meeting, HSAB is convening by video conference via Zoom app. As posted on the town's website, identifying how the town may, the public may join. <clears throat> you can find information on the conduct of this meeting at that location. Note this meeting is being recorded and each vote, if we have any, will be by, by roll call. Um, okay, so Brooke has let me know that he's not gonna be here terribly long. So I wanted to deal with some particular projects. Brooke, what were those that you, you noted? Um, I had two Stone Alley, uh, 31 Western Ave, and 94 Orange, the last three. Um, I, I think I should be able to stay here till like 2.30, so it, we might actually get... Okay, I think thing. we'll get through. I think we'll be wrapping up around that time. Yeah. But um, just in case, I didn't see two Stone Alley on the agenda. It's there. It was. Just the third from the bottom. Um, so I'm going to say, Tori, which one are you here for? Or which ones? The first one, I think it's three west over. All right, let's knock that one off. because you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And Thank I you. I bet you E. Murphy is probably here for 34B Walsh. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, okay. So, Thank you. Yeah, let's do those two and then we can hop around a bit if we, if we choose to. So first is three West Dover and I'll share. Hey. And, and Mickey, I could not find um, most of these links on the agenda. Willard and uh, Washington. I yeah, couldn't Willard see and Washington. Willard, yeah. And yeah, then we'll even uh, uh, Western Ave, the, it was the shed, which we did last week, and not what's uh, on the agenda. Well, I actually was able to get Western Ave stair uh, changes to the front door, which is what okay. it was. So let's look at that in a minute. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, so here, Tori, here's your um, project. Thank you so much, guys. So we've got, um, I believe it's six foot by seven foot small little addition on the east elevation there. Um, it's to the existing shed in the back right corner of the three west over lot. And we are repurposing the existing window into the gable end of that small little addition. Um, same pitch as the existing building, fairly simple, leaving the door in place as is. Um, any questions, please let me know. You know, this looks pr really pretty simple. My only issue with this one was I, th I think you've switched the labels, but I may be wrong on that. Oh, of the elevations? Yeah, east and west. Did I mess it up? Just, e oh yeah, I think you're right. Yes, you're yeah. absolutely correct. Yeah. So <laughs> anybody have any concerns about this one? I don't have any concerns. The only, and it's a zoning thing. I, it looks like it's less than five feet from the back line. Um, as it grows, but. So you mean the new addition part, Angus? Yeah. Um, is it when the building is existing? So I might, you're saying I might have to go to the zoning board to extend a non-exist, a non-conforming existing this, situation? Yeah. Tori, it's coming off this corner here. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. You got it. Yeah. So if you're, that's. It's a pre-existing non-conforming situation, not to spend any time on it, but you no, should I will follow up on that. Yeah, be able to get relief. That. You yeah. might be too close to this property line. And you might That's be, what Angus is saying, I think. Yes, and you might be too close to this corner. So yeah, okay. I mean, from an HDC perspective, I think, I think we're all okay with it, um, but okay. you might have other issues. <clears throat> yes, I will look into that. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Tori. Anything else for you? 
Nope, that's it. All right. See you later. Thanks, guys. Yep. So next, let's jump down to um, 34B Walsh. If I can find it. Not here. This looks like it. Yeah. So, um, E. Murphy, I forget your first name. I'm sorry. Yes, it, it's Eileen Murphy, and I have my sister Maureen here with me. Okay. Did you want to make a comment about this? Sure. Yes. And we appreciate the opportunity. So this is uh, Maureen Murphy speaking. Um, we, we've looked at the revisions that the agent for the um, applicant has submitted, uh, I guess, in reference to the last HGC meeting and presumably to address the HSAB um, concerns to us. It really doesn't address our concerns. We continued at the very concerns that this structure is too massive, given the location, very visible as has been acknowledged by most between 38 and 40 Walsh. We own 40 Walsh. Nothing has been uh, done to address our concern with regard to that new storage area, the wing that comes off the northerly elevation that is a full two-story. Uh, it's not currently part of the permanent structure now. So this is an add-on to the footprint. And it, it, it's just, in our view, very out of character for the neighborhood and the location. And our concern is that it is too massive to be five feet off of the property line with us. They don't seem to want to address any of the concerns we've raised with regard to the only way to get egress into that storage unit is to open up the doors into the setback and we continue to have ongoing concerns with regard to what the actual setback requirement is. We consider that to be the front of the dwelling. Linda Williams doesn't seem to think that it makes any difference what the front, the side, or the rear is. We beg to differ since the front has a 10 foot setback and both sides and the rear based upon the zoning regs in our area, have the five foot. So it's very, very important to us that that issue be addressed. Um, so, you know, we, we appreciate that the architect is trying to make some changes. It looks like they have reduced the size of the ridge, the parallel ridge across. They've chopped a little bit off on the Yes, it's the westerly side, but that doesn't do anything to um, address the concern where it's most visible between 38 and 40. So that's kind of where we're coming out. We're just really um, concerned about all of this. We, we recognize that Mr. Sloan has every opportunity and right to make renovations to a structure, but it seems as though Every single thing that he goes to do, he pushes the envelope. And this is not getting personal, but three times he went before the HDC for a roof walk on a one and a half story structure. It was denied, denied, he appealed it, and they finally acquiesced and gave him the roof walk. Same thing with his existing storage shed, which is a standalone structure. When it was first dropped in his yard, it was a twice the size of the structure and he didn't want to move it. Uh, he didn't feel as though it was important to comply with zoning restrictions. So we had to appeal to Marcus Silverstein and he got a smaller shed and he squeezed it in five feet off the property line, even though it should be 10 feet off the property line. So uh, again, it's just the realization when someone buys a house like this on a lot like this, I feel as though they should recognize the limitations of that lot. And now 10 years after they've purchased the property, they want to make this monstrosity of an addition. 
I think that they should look for another location to do it in. And they shouldn't destroy the character of our neighborhood or the quality of life for all of the neighbors. It seems as though the HTC is here to protect everyone except our neighborhood. Time and time again, they have acquiesced. So I guess that's my final word on it. We're, we're very, very disappointed. We've been in our home for 25 years. We don't come from money. We don't have deep pockets. We've had a mortgage payment for all of these years and we've never rented our house. Okay, let's, and, wrap, let's, let's wrap it up if you could please. All right, I'll wrap it up. But he, you know, he and the HDC was, was doing all of this too. And we didn't get our say to say that. I mean, I'm just saying that it's the quality of our life and it's also the character of our neighborhood. This is too big. And, 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 and again, I think you all agreed that it was too large. And my concern is this is setting precedent that there's also a modular house right next to his at 34 E Wall Street. And, and, and that most definitely will go in the same path as this one. The owner is in Newport Beach, California. He rents it out. He spends two weeks there. And there's no reason why he couldn't try to the HGC and get approved plans like this. The other okay. one at 34 Wall Street, that was exactly what happened. They, a developer okay. purchased I'm, that I, I, property I think and we're getting. It. I'm sorry, but I think we're getting your point and I'm going to have to, to call. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank I appreciate you. being heard. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Um, all right. So, board members, um, I've you know as I usual, I have a, a a list of things. I think we're going to agree with a lot of what the Murphys are pointing out. I'll go ahead and read my list, and then you can add to it. Um, it's mostly about this north elevation. The 37 foot ridge parallel to Wall Street is still too long and should be reduced to about 30 feet to conform to the scale of the neighboring houses. The north elevation will be visible from Wall Street and lacks the uniformity of a traditional house facade. The front windows are disorganized and the front door needs a stronger surround. The fenced outdoor shower does not belong on the front porch. The front dormers add to the height and should be eliminated. The east elevation, ganged windows right here. The east elevation gang windows no longer work on this style house and should be separated. H. Sab would like to see revisions. <clears throat> I'm also gonna add, and I think that the Murphys have a, a good point that they're adding closer to Wall Street, closer to the neighbor by putting in this. Um, porch? Well, not the porch. If I can find the, storage. it's the storage unit. Yeah. yeah. Um, this shows it pretty clearly. Here's the front of the house now, and now they're adding, it's a one story shed type roof. It's not, it's not onerous in terms of its height or volume or anything, but it is on the front of the house and it's getting closer to, you know, a, what, you know, conceivably could, could or maybe should be a 10 foot setback rather than a five, but I get their zoning calculation. So it's this thing here. So I'm gonna throw that in as a, as a concern that they're adding that to the front where it's unnecessary. So that, that's my list. Anybody, you guys wanna speak I up? agree with everything that you've said, Mickey. Do you wanna add anything? No. Nope. Yeah, what's that little AC unit that I can see on the north elevation? Yeah, that's, that's right there. That's on the side and that's facing west. There are two of those. Uh, excuse me, it's Eileen. There are two air conditioning units hung off of that storage unit. Mm -hmm. Again, that's five feet off of the property line. Yep. And not shown on this um, is, is also a torpedo propane tank. So just so that you guys can get the gist of this, when Yates comes and does the propane refill of their tank, they have to go right along the property line where he has trees planted, by the way. By, right at the property line. And they've got to scoot around this to the this elevation where you've got pictured west. at west. And, and that's where this torpedo propane tank would be well, located. They're not showing them, well, I guess they are. They're showing them right here now. Right. 
Um, so I don't know if they're allowed to put those in the set pack. Is that possible? Yeah, uh, they are allowed if it's a freestanding and it's a torpedo uh, subject to space restrictions. They are allowed. It doesn't count towards the setback. But I just want to show you that how congested this is. And I understand. How okay. Yep. Um, we, we get that. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, Brooke, did you say something? Um, you know, I agree with what you've said. I definitely um, feel like the uh, part facing north is again, it's just a missed opportunity to do something interesting um, in this part of uh, the island. I mean, Holbert Avenue has a lot of interesting architecture and um, I, I feel like this building might be a little, almost too plain. Uh, and certainly the, the uh, fenestration facing north doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, there's, it's, it just looks like it was scattershot. So. How about the fenestration on the on the south? I don't know that that's visible, but yeah, I honestly didn't focus too much on the south because I'm it's it's <clears throat> not terribly visible, I and I, it doesn't bother me. Well, those two windows on the third floor are sort of weird. The dormers. Yeah. Yeah. If they reduce the scale of the front mass, that's going to change. You know, I looked at, you know, when you look at the side view here and you see the numbers, it's 31 feet above and a half above grade. And considering that they're three or four feet out of the ground more than normal, kind of knocks, the, you know, this, this building is, is more of a scale of like a 27 foot high building normally, except it happens to be in a floodplain. <clears throat> so I, you know, they've, I think they've lowered it down, you know, fair enough to the front in terms of a two-story building. So to me, the height was no longer a big concern, except visually those dormers, I think, um, don't help. Sorry, I'm jumping around here. Here we go. The dormers don't look good and they add to the height and the same with the roof walk for that matter but probably not as much as these dormers do so um i didn't really address the height issue lucy did you want to say something no i'm fine okay any other comments from the board members all right okay thank you murphy's um Good to hear your comments. Thank you. We very much appreciate your considering our concerns. I know you didn't address the size of the roof walk this go around, but that was they've made no changes to the side of size of that roof walk. As you can see, they've moved it from the existing location on the side of the structure, the end of the structure of the ridge, to the middle, which makes it even that much more visible. And they did remove the skirt, which was someone's concern, mm -hmm. but they have done nothing to change the size of the roof walk. It's very large and very imposing and would be very visible between 38 and 40 Walsh. Got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sure. All right, <clears throat> looking back at the agenda, um, I'm going to jump down now to two Stone Alley, but remind me to come back up. We've done 34, three. Okay, two Stone Alley, which is two down. Uh, that's not it. That's not it. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. I see no representation. Wait a minute, who's this? Um, so, Two Stone Alley, this is, um, you know, Mike, it's, it's not a lot of change. I mean, they've, they've, I think they made this roof pitch steeper for some reason, which is not bad, but uh, last time we were, we were more concerned about this roof pitch and they didn't change that at all. So comments are, very little, if anything, has been changed to address the massing concerns of the latest 
the last version. Uh, the roof pitch of the middle section is still too shallow. This section should be narrower with a steeper pitch. This will reduce the boxy appearance and lower the plate. The hipped roof addition is still too long. I'm going to go down to the north. Oops. There we go. North here. The hipped roof addition is still too long east to west and should be reduced by five or six feet. These additions are considerably larger than the existing house. They overwhelm the original cottage and completely change the scale. HSAB would like to see revisions. So, <clears throat> comments? Um, Go ahead, Brooke. Uh, I would like to uh, point out that the chimney came outside the building, um, which I think was one of the main concerns this whole time. It was a concern. Yeah, so that's nice to see. Um, and the window proportions, definitely, uh, that was a concern and that looks like that was addressed. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the uh, the other stuff you mentioned, the roof, uh, roof pitch, the steepness of the roof pitch uh, for the middle mass and the length of the first floor, um, I guess, living room space. Um, I, I agree uh, somewhat. I feel like uh, if they could probably get away with, you know, maybe bringing that in three or four feet, but not like, and still succeed. So yes, in general, though, I agree. And it's just nice to see some of the changes, um, like we actually were uh, heard and listened to. Mm -hmm. So. so Regarding that, you know, the, the reason I'm saying that this is, is so long is because it's, it's a hipped roof projection off the back. And, you know, hipped roofs have traditionally often been porches, you know, like glass in mm -hmm. porches. This is well beyond the feeling of, a, of a, an enclosed porch. And, you know, if it were that much shorter, it actually might have that feeling, and especially if the pitch were maybe a little shallower. It might bump up against it and it would it might kind of get that feeling of it's just an old porch that was glassed in but it, right. it doesn't at that length it really looks like an entire room that was added on right right okay so um maybe i'll maybe i'll throw that i mean overall like for me personally i'm really happy with you know obviously we're not going to get it to go all the way to the south but I do appreciate the amount of effort that um, Matt has put into making this, um, you know, at least more visually appealing. So. Yeah, and there, you're right. There has been some effort. I, you know, it's generally I don't feel like they're listening or addressing the concerns that we've been stating yeah. all right. along. Um, Nothing Angus, oh, further. Okay, thanks, Brooke. Lucy. Um, I agree with you about that addition. It's just, it's, it's awkward, very awkward. Mm -hmm. It looks like a part of a ranch house stuck on the rack. Yeah. Okay, Angus. Can I ask? Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Diane. One of the things that has concerned me the whole time is the length of the old house and the middle part that they are as far as one would be able to see as you're driving along mm -hmm. it looks like one long e there i keep thinking that the middle part should drop down so that the old house stands free the the addition to the old house is bigger than the old house and particularly with the third one on the side it that too is is bigger it it to me it removes the whole thing of the of the old house and i don't know i've asked for some of it to go down to the south and they have refused and i don't know i i keep asking for that middle part to drop down enough to make some difference and it does not seem to be done and so perhaps architecturally, it would be considered a good thing. So I'm asking you what you think. 
Well, I think what you're saying, personally, I think what you're saying is is definitely relevant. I think that to have this, we've always wanted a big drop here and they've given us sort of a drop, but it's kind of token. It's not sure what it is, 16 inches. Yeah. Um, it, it should, I, you know, I agree. I think it should be more. This should feel, this plate should probably be down at the floor level, not at the, not with a knee wall. And that would feel a whole lot better to me. So, you know, Diane, I would, I would make it just make a suggestion that when you, <clears throat> at the end of the hearing for this project, when someone's making emotions for revisions that you, th you tell them what you want for revisions, you know, drop that plate, shorten this wing, if, if those are things that are of a concern and see if the rest of the board will go along with, the, with that motion. Right. Uh, well, I have, but I'll try again. Yeah. Because I think it's an important building on a sort of an individual street that people go to to see what it looks like. And, and we're building yet another clump of house. Yeah. So Good. I will add that to my motion, see if I can get it to go. Great. Thank you. Angus? I agree with uh, pretty much all of your comments and I agree with Brooke as well as, as far as uh, effort that's been made. Um, Diane uh, beat me to, to my main point and that is as, as much as I appreciate the, the far uh, east side um, dropping uh, and having a lower eave, I, I agree about you know, how that would more typically be a porch and would be shallower, but it's the midsection that I feel is, is still making this uh, tail wagging the dog um, situation where, where the, the scale and proportions of the original structure are being compromised by the, the grandness of, of, the, of the addition. So I, I think um, it's, there's still work to be done as far as dro dropping that midsection. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think that's a good point. And even, you know, st steepening that roof pitch would accomplish some of that. And, you know, I don't know if they'd listen to this, but making it the narrower, that would accomplish a little bit more. It could conceivably get the plate down nearly to the floor. And I think that would make a big difference in the feel of it. It's just one of those things that, um, you know, if it were a, f a typical flat lot in town and there were buildings on either side, it would be one thing, but this is a slope that I think the, the, the design of the addition has to respond to. And it's just going straight back as though there weren't a slope. And so it, it accentuates that height. Yeah, all this stuff down here. That's all. Well, what's, okay. the, what's the age of the um, structure? What is the age? Um, anybody out there know? Rita 18, what's the term? 1858, 1859, I believe. Mary Ginger's on the line. Mary, did you say something? Oh, yeah, I was just saying Ginger's on the, on the line. She's the, the, oh, that's okay, it. that's Ginger, okay. Ginger, did you Is want to make a turn? comment? Well, I did. And um, uh, one of the, uh, I totally agree with what Diane has said and with the comment about um, the, uh, the height of the, uh, the, the east end of the east end, uh, because uh, to call, a, a, you know, a one story addition, it, you know, once it's stuck out over a steep slope, um, it starts to look like one story has, you know, two or three floors. So um, one of my concerns is the is the grading, uh, because they're redoing the foundation and it's, it's really not, to me, it's, it's, it's hard to call something an addition when it involves De essentially demolishing all but one wall of a post and beam structure and um, the uh, you know the, the west wall I'm not, I'm not, 
I'm just not sure how much of it would be left. It's it's kind of more like a rebuild, really. Um, the uh, the the grading uh, that will be necessary when it's rebuilding the foundation, uh, I'm really concerned about how that relates to the grades of Stone Alley because uh, I'm not sure that the grades that are shown on the plan are um, entirely accurate or that they would be, um, uh, uh, you know, respected once the, once everything starts to come in and start clawing. So, uh, so, my, so my major concern is, is the demolition as well as the, the, you know, the, the box that swallowed the cottage. It's, it was a 1878 to so on, uh, Somewhere uh, along there, it was a barn that was converted in, uh, I believe, 1910 or 1911. So um, it was a, a you know, a, a, the original structure was built in the days when wood was wood. It was uh, most likely a post and beam structure with, you know, lime plaster. And all of those are very durable materials. So to see, you know, a, a few boards set and the and the roof of course saved on one end doesn't it, it doesn't feel like an addition to me it feels like a demo and um start over okay well you know the you're i'm i'm thinking about your what you said about the demo and i'm just trying to look at the elevations i mean on the north they're keeping this mostly intact Definitely on the east, they're doing quite a bit of, or is the east? Quite a bit of demo on the east. And on the south, west, nothing. Mickey, could I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Mary. Um, and this is to you or to Diane or Harvard can answer it. Is how does how do we uh, define a demolition right now at the HDC? Yeah. How do we define demolition? <clears throat> yeah. Is it like the total raising of a structure? Because I think, you know, it, this is an opportunity to point out what Ginger was talking about is how much of the original material is being taken out. Well, that's what I'm trying to ascertain is, 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 you know, the, um, and Matt, generally is pretty good about identifying the pieces that are being demoed. Obviously, this is not a full demo, at least they're saying it's not. They're indicating, you know, that some things are being removed and they're outlined here in red on the existing plans. But, um, you know, the, hot, the whole house isn't coming down, that's for sure. <clears throat> this porch is, and that, that's, that's a concern that has been all along. They, I guess they feel they're replicating the porch and that's kind of a question mark. Um, but I think a lot of, you know, the interior, who knows, that's probably in full gut right now. But, um, you know, the exterior walls look mostly, to me, they look mostly intact unless somebody has something um, to say that I'm missing. So it's mostly this west ele east elevation where this is a lot of stuff is being removed. Um, all right, any board members want to add anything else to this one? Other than it's basically a gut job. Well, it is. Um, okay, thank you. Next, we have 31 Western Ave. So they made, where's the, uh, previously, previously we were looking at this peculiar door and they've changed the, the they got rid of the X bracing, they, uh, Put in, they were, you know, they were, I think they might, might have even said they're going to keep the um, existing doors and not use these new ones. And they're changing, they have a couple options for these doors. 
and they've also, I believe, although I can't see what their um, previous plan was, but I think they've simplified the ramp system to some degree. And I think they used to connect. And now yes, they did. Yeah, or now they're independent. And this one is just a simple, relatively simple <clears throat> L-shaped ramp along the edge. So that's most of it. It's this ramp and the front door. And I'll show you the options right here. This is option B and C. <coughs> I think I can throw out C. It's, you know, we talked about plate glass before, but I don't think we are referring to just single light doors. Um, so I don't, personally, I don't think C is appropriate. <coughs> And B, this is just the taller version of A without the transom. And here it is with the transom. The nice thing I think about the transom is that it, it keeps the opening original and it shortens the doors to more of a, I think these are just seven foot high doors, which is pretty good. And I, you know, yeah, it's not the Coast Guard's station or the life-saving station but um you know i think as a considering it's it's inevitably to be repurposed you know it's it's becoming a human habit habitable building i don't personally i don't mind this door <clears throat> thing i my only comment is that maybe we want to go to the usual 12 panel 12 light one panel doors um so what did i say that's basically a french Front French door should be 12 light with kick panel and we prefer option A, but I'm definitely open to um, the discussion here. Go ahead, Brooke. Um, would you mind zooming in on the existing south elevation in the upper right-hand corner? Okay. I was just looking at that, uh, that center, uh, looks like the break in the shingle line. Right here. Yeah, okay, so that is, that is where that is. All right. Um, Cause it just, it, at first it just seemed like the door was being set up higher um, for no real reason, but yep. it does look like it has a reason. So um, I, I especially like the new um, uh, access ramp. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's simple. It does not um, interfere with the elevation. Mm -hmm. on that side very much and yeah. uh as for the doors um yeah i mean you know it's it's not ideal but uh yeah. it looks like this building is finally getting some attention so that's a good thing okay thanks brooke i'm gonna i want lucy can you hold for one second i'm gonna sure. i'm gonna ask mary bergman bergman about you know they have the restriction on this and so how does this, um, what's going on with that and how does it relate to our discussion at the moment? I'm trying to figure that out um, <laughs> because uh, this was not sent to us, uh, which is okay, our, 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 or can, can be corrected. Our, our easement committee has met, has reviewed what you, what the HDC saw. And I guess the last submission that you all saw which was that like 20 light door with the nine light transom. We met, we found that what was submitted was approval by the Secretary of the Interior Standards. And we made some suggestions uh, that they might, that, that Emeritus might consider, um, one of which was to simplify the door. So, and, and um, relating to the bracing to have it be more historically accurate. And I think you're seeing that with the, the exterior door. In the terms of the interior door that, that, you know, we had encouraged them to kind of think about the opening up as more of a void. That was, so it, that's, I think where that single um, glazed opening is coming from. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, obviously it sounds like that's not something that this committee is liking. Um, 
but in that there wasn't a door there in the first place because it just would have been an open dory barn type situation. We felt that having that, you know, simple was better with that front door. When you, when you, what are you referring to was that sort of the kind of a more transparent plate glass yeah. frame, frameless like, door basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's not, you know, I'm just trying to think of how that <clears throat> technically works to to be sealed. They'd have to have some sort of frame. I don't think you'll ever see it. Is this a big sheet of glass or? No, I think that what they've submitted, can you scroll down to option C? It does seem similar to what's at the Thomas Macy warehouse now, I think. This is just well, three. Well, maybe not. You're right, because yeah. it's just three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, thanks, Mary. Yep. Uh, Lucy, go ahead. I have two questions. Um, last time when we re reviewed this, we asked for them to submit what it would look like if those doors are closed. Oh, yeah. Because there's windows behind. Yeah, right. I think we should know what's behind large doors. And what does the other side of these large doors look like? What does it look like? Do we know that from the old photographs? The the it's on an angle. On both sides of the doors. On the outside door that faces outdoors when they are closed, I believe they are on an angle going up. Let me um. Right, but Diane, my question was: if you close those doors, what does it look like? Here we go. That's on the angle too. Yeah, that's the way they have looked all the years I've been their mailman. Not that. So should we we should stipulate that the it should be on an angle on both sides. You and, and we would like a drawing of what it looks like when they're closed. This yeah, that, that's a good idea. This tells me that it was horizontal boards on the interior. On the inside. Yeah. Oh, okay. So angles on the outside. Yes, here's definitely angled on the outside, which you, you know, they're going to leave them open almost all the time. We won't see that much, but the interior um, on those photographs shows it is to me, it looks like horizontal boards, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I believe it is straight across on the inside and angled on the outside. So they've kind of got that backwards. <clears throat> I, I guess my point is, Mickey, yeah. is we should just know what's going on, what the other side of the door looks like and yes. what the building looks like when those doors are closed. Yep. I mean, are there, what do the hinges look like? Are they gonna have those big strap hinges? And you know, what's the hardware gonna be? It's gonna match the the hinges, or is it going to be nice, shiny chrome, contemporary? Yeah. Well, here's. Can I get this? No, that's just. What is that? Oh, that's option D. <clears throat> no. Okay. Yeah, good point. And we did ask for that before. We don't. We don't. We still don't know. And and are we going to ask them now to? flip these over so we want the horizontal on this side which is yes and these are they strap hinges i forget what those look like yeah there's some couple straps and are those doors painted they're painted an off a, a dark cd red like a barn red right okay on both sides. Well, I think the inside side loosely was not painted. I don't remember it being painted, but it's been some time since I was out there. But with there it is, the color yep. that was used. So okay. I can't tell the what these look like actually. Um well, I don't want to be nudgy. I'm just, I'm, my whole point is we ought to know what's going on because this is an historic building. 
Yeah, these actually look diagonal. It's hard to tell. Yeah, okay, so I get your point, so I'll, I'll, I'll <clears throat> note that. Angus, did you have a comment? I do. Uh, could you please go back to the south facing elevation options? Yeah, all the options. My, um, my concern is that, you know, obviously the shingled wall and the door look, look wrong, but why do they look wrong? Because it, it was an opening and, and it seems um, kind of arbitrary what happens in there. And I feel like the same thing happens when when we're dividing the space up into three three doors and one long transom. I, I feel like the two a uh, two door option is much truer to the opening and the functioning of the of the exterior doors. And I might be the only person <laughs> looking for it, but <clears throat> I would love to see like a, a minimum or maximum like inch and a half, two inch steel frame around just plate glass in that opening with two doors that swing open. And when they're closed, you basically look in as though it was a clear space. The lower option with three doors uh, that have no lights in them uh, doesn't, doesn't work for me because, is that option C maybe? Um, yeah. Bless you. Is, um, is, the clumsiness of, of the styles and rails of wood doors. And um, so for me, I, I think it, it works better visually to, to have it broken into two spaces instead of three. It still feels like wall infill instead of opening. I do appreciate the ramp simplicity. I think that really helps. Good. All right. <laughs> um, you know, you go back to the old photographs and these, these are bays also. These had big panel uh, batten doors on them, the side views. And of course they've been windows for years and that's, that's not even being proposed to change. So it's, you know, it's, it's gone from a utilitary looking boathouse to a more of a residential building. Um, you know, this is very barn-like boathouse, totally. And then, uh, let's just tell us, this is, this is a really old one <clears throat> before the side buildings. So, yeah, I guess I get your point about the trying to maintain that big opening. Um, is, 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 is it ever gonna look like a boathouse again? Um, it's not as much about, you know, for me, it's not as much as whether it looks like a boathouse, it's that here are those big doors that are not eliminated, they're there. And so what the big doors say is there's a big opening. And when it gets filled in with, you know, the division between the doors and the, uh, and the transom and their, you know, th three doors with all of the associated um, divisions with the um, styles of the doors, it just, it, it doesn't ring true for me. Uh, it yeah. would, seeing those big doors. I think it's sort of an, you know, you just have to accept, to me, it's sort of like accepting that this is now a residential building and they're, they're maintaining the, pre, the, the, the semblance and, and remnants of the boathouse with those big doors. Um, and just trying to make it look sort of normal within the use that they're proposing. Um, and, but I, I totally get your, so you're, so you're saying, forget all of this framing and literally go with two, two large glass, minimally framed glass panels. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I feel like that meets, you know, as far as energy code and sealing it off, it does that, but everything else, it works more purely and holistically with what is left, which are those big doors and the big opening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think it's, 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 it's a, you know, we're, we're, um, We've done it before. I think we can present a couple different discussions about this one and arguments. And um, it's, it's a tough one. It's it's a it's a different. There are two different approaches, and I don't know what you know where well, we're going to. My only comment to Angus's idea is that I worry that um, it might set a precedent for people who have large doors to designs with large doors that they never plan on closing and then they'll do big plate glass doors mm -hmm. i guess we've seen and we see something similar to that down on uh, india india yep yeah yeah i hate i mean i you're right lucy that's a that's a concern i hate i hate considering precedences but i guess that's a fact to deal with um, all right. Um, any other comments about this? I'm just going to try to um, sort of outline both of our discussion points here. Uh, okay. So the next on the agenda is 94 Orange. <clears throat> Um, this was awkward before and it's awkward now. I don't think we see what they originally proposed. It's not part of the application. Um, my comments are <clears throat> massing is still very awkward. Tiny gables flush with adjacent shingled walls don't work. Trying to maintain a full two-story eave height in the addition is not realistic. Basically, all I've got to say it's it's they've just got to change the approach here. It can't be a two-story addition. <clears throat> Doesn't get any better over here. Not sure what this is. Is this a are these windows? They might just be regular windows that didn't draw well. I think they are. Yeah. So, thoughts? Any other any, anything to add? It's a different way. Of I saying agree it. that it just really feels weird to have that gable. I mean, there shouldn't really be a second floor for that part of the addition, as you've noted. But but then to have that gable at the at the end is so weird in that south elevation. Uh -huh. Isn't that a crazy roof line that comes? down angle straight and then goes up again yeah right there yeah it's 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 pretty messed up i mean i i see what they're doing but it's not really what we want to see it's probably not really drawn well i guess it could be a slope in here um i think they really just have to start looking at this as a, you know thinking about what would i do i mean you, you kind of have to leave this corner board this this edge here, you can't really extend this wall plane any further. It's not working. So if that maintains itself, and I think you just have to look at this as just a you know a, a story and a half at best addition. Try to get some decent looking dormers in there. It'll it'll cut in on their space, but I think it's probably given close to what they're looking for. Um, Comments, Brooke? You're muted. Was that a, was that a no comment? Because you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, I I agree. Um, it is it's awkward. Um, I think you know maybe they could salt box that uh, east elevation gable um, and turn it into that one story. Uh, 
mass that you're talking about pretty easily, or even just do a, a, a another broken back or something, you know, just to articulate the corners a little bit better, but. It'd have um, to give it a, I mean, this short pitch here is just too short. Even if they did salt box the rest of it, yeah. they'd have to give this a little bit more weight on this side. Right. Lowering it might help, but it's awkward. They're, I think they're just trying for more than they're really gonna be able to have. Yeah, nothing else to add. Lucy? I, I'm, I have nothing else to add. This needs to be reworked. Yeah. Yeah, I think the HTC will recognize that. Um, okay, let's move back up the agenda up to 26 Easy Street. This is the parking. So I guess it took me a while to figure this one out. They're just, they're leaving this building for the time being. And so we're just talking about a parking space, changing the location of an apron and moving the opening down the road. <clears throat> um, here's some pictures. So I don't know when this picture was taken. Lucy, I'm gonna, I'll show them the pictures you sent if I can. This is, this is current conditions right now? Yeah, I took that, um, I don't know, half an hour before I sent it to you. Yeah. Notice the curb cut in front of the building. Yeah. Right there. So if they get a new curb cut, we should ask that that be eliminated mm -hmm. and that the curb stone, if that is stone and not concrete, be um, reused. Reused. I think this is concrete. Um, and then if you look at the plan closely, you'll see that brick is, the whole area is not brick, but there's um, keystone at the back of um, the area, I guess what I'm Up trying here. to say is, yeah, that yeah. I, I would not like to see all of that right. bricked in. And um, what's with that little blue structure? <laughs> They're leaving it for now. It looks like they are. Who knows if they'll dress it up, but the uh, plan so it still looks like they're, they're not really talking about a change. This looks like roughly that line of brick to gravel. Okay. My only thought here was if they're actually gonna turn this into a driveway, it should be a full driveway, not a sh really short, you know, that th maybe this section past the edge of the sidewalk should also be gravel, not partially brick. Um, and I also said the gravel should be natural stone rather than gray gravel. So what did I say? <clears throat> Apron should be no deeper than the sidewalk right here. And gravel should be natural stone color. Do you want to add to that? Go ahead, Brooke. Just a question from a planning perspective. Um, I think they're required to have a 10 foot deep uh, apron. You know, something came up recently where in the OHD that you don't need to have a 10 foot deep apron. I'm not sure if that was a fact or just stated. Um, oh, doesn't sound like anything planning would go with. Yeah. <laughs> Although it is, you know, sidewalks are pretty shallow and roads yeah. and driveway start generally after that. Yeah. So uh, I mean, kind of, if, the, if it's okay to do that, then I, uh, you know, I agree with you. Okay. Angus? The setting downtown, um, you know, it, it makes you exempt from what happens every, everywhere else outside the core. Um, I think it makes a lot more sense to, to have the apron only as deep as the sidewalk. And I think yeah, th there's a note there. Eliminate existing curb cuts. So they, they would they would bring that up, and it did look like concrete curbing, 
not at the curb cut where I think it's granite, but um, back here over in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like kind of what I said. Um, next is the doors. This one, I'm not really sure what they're at. Are they, <clears throat> a couple of questions I had. I mean, they're saying 12 light, two panel doors. Have they? And this, all the, in the application, it says two panel everywhere and they're not two panels. There's one panel. So I don't know what, what that's about. Yeah, have they already done this work maybe? And were they just getting approval for it? I don't, I, I could, I don't know. My, my comments also, I thought this is just, to me, this, you can almost see some vertical stuff here just barely in the picture. I just said that um, probably no concerns, but we'd like to see what a two panel 12 light door looks like. And maybe, that, maybe that's not really not what they mean. And then the flush panel door should be a batten door right here. So I think, you know, we don't want this to be one just smooth sheet of paint. And all these doors look too new to be proposed for changing. Exactly. So it's a little, it is a little confusing. So that's why I was wondering if maybe they've already done this work. Sorry, I didn't look at the doors. Yeah, I, I don't think it matters. I'm, you know, I think I'm fine with the way it looks now. If that's what they're proposing, no problem. Unless they could change this one. <clears throat> and maybe it already is a batten door. One of those, you know, machined slabs that looks kind of like battens. <clears throat> So any concerns about this one other than what I've said? No. Nope. Okay. And then moving down to four raised court, this is the demo of this building, which here's the application we didn't get last week. Um, this is a, according to the applicant, a, it was built around 2000. Um, so not terribly new, kind of an awkward looking structure to begin with. Um, so we're not really looking at the, the new, that's a, that was last week. So any, any thoughts, concerns about this one? No. Yeah, I said no concerns. Yeah, I mean, um... It looks it looks fairly new from the outside. Is there like a three quarters of this being built in two thousand? Is there because there was something there hmm. long ago? So the question is: Is any of that less left, or was that when with the work that was done in two thousand was that completely mm -hmm. um, lost? Yeah, I guess we don't have the answer to that question. I'm, I'm just gonna guess it's all, <clears throat> you know, back in 2000, I imagine they demoed whatever was there and built this new thing, but we don't really know. Is that Ray's antique shop? No. It's not no. Linda's, it's not Linda's old building. I think it is Linda's old building. Yes, think it, it is. is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, the antique store is back in this. Where's Ray's Court? It's back here, right? Yeah. 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 yeah we're a couple buildings away over here. They want to demo the garage? Yeah, so last week, Diane, they, we looked at an application to do a lot of work on this building. Uh, we had a fair number of issues with the proposal, but they're demoing this thing, building a new garage, and then connecting the two, and a fairly significant addition off the back. Oh. So you can see that. Um, on, on, on our notes that we sent around last week. Um, but you'll, it'll probably be coming up in a week or two to the HTC. Oh, 
Um, Diane, what, yes. what, one of the concerns we had was um, that this property goes all the way over to Judith Chase. And yeah, that's along, what I was Judith, along Judith Chase is a very, is a board fence that's in very poor condition. So we were concerned of what the rear of this house and garage is gonna look like from Judith Chase, because you have to consider that that fence may not be there in the future. Right. And that it also fits in with the architecture along Judith Chase. Exactly. Yeah. It's one of our oldest houses back there that we've padded over the head for a long time. Yep. Good point. <clears throat> Race okay. court is coming is on our agenda for tomorrow. Oh, good. You'll see it. <clears throat> okay, so is this a no concerns? To me, it was. Yes. Yeah, no concerns. Okay. Nope. All right. <clears throat> so we got one more here, which is right here. <clears throat> This is down on Washington Street. We saw this before and you can see the old drawings. You did make some corrections to the drawings, um, not just revisions, but corrections. So the original application was for this deck to go all the way on top of this shed, we didn't like that. And there's some other, just missed, you know, that was. <clears throat> so now what she's proposing is <clears throat> these aren't connected. This hip roof is in the front of the building and it's disjointed from this little shed on the side. This is all existing. You can see in the photograph, that's all there. She corrected the drawings from the previous submission to show that it's actually present. Um, but you can see this little tiny sl sliver of a deck, right, I'm a roof right here, it's almost a foot wide. So I said the one foot sliver of a roof shown on the west elevation does not work. The, the roof should be much larger and the deck smaller in both directions so that the deck appears to be cut into the roof plane. We'd like to see revisions. That's ah, got it. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's, she's making it look from the south or whatever it is, the other elevation. It, it, she makes it, it look like it's connected, but in that, in reality, it's... Well, yeah, they're definitely not connected. Yeah. And here she's showing it as if it's kind of, it still should be, you know, a, a couple feet back from the face of this porch roof. Right. And yeah. not to mention well within, inside of it. So it should yeah, so be... So step back from the side and stepped in from the front. Yeah. So what I forgot about was these additional sliders and she's sort of saying that they've already got sliders which I guess they do unfortunately. Are, were those approved though? Well I don't know there, there it is and the photograph confirms it um, but I'm not so sure we should be saying go ahead and add some new ones. So the existing What the existing? Oh, here's the existing. There's nothing there. So, yeah, I think we should. Those should be swinging French doors, right? Yep. Divided light TDLs. Um, can I see the locus again? Yeah. That's the site plan. Here's the locus. So this is the you know it's right on the bike path. <laughs> no, it's right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a mishmash down there, but. I think trying to make this building a little bit nicer is it's a good direction to take it in. Yeah, and it's you know there it's a new building. It's there is some different stuff going on, but you know it's it's in the OHD. We shouldn't be allowing right. single, single light sliders. And that and yes. the little little old. <clears throat> The little old house is right there on the corner of of the Consu. So it and these were sort of shacky old houses, if you remember mm -hmm. the paths, I think. 
it's um they've completely changed the, that neighborhood but yeah so these are shown with divided lights it's hard to tell in the picture but you know the, the argument is likely going to be they're just one over one so why would they put muttons in the <clears throat> doors but the other doors seem to have them so why not because we told them to <laughs> yeah. Let's let's just revise towards a better aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. Move in that direction. I'm with Brooke on that. I mean, just just because there are some things that don't meet the guidelines that shouldn't be there, especially in a, a highly visible, highly trafficked space. Um, every every change should be in the step of the right direction rather than than continuing to go in the wrong direction. And I mean, a, a, a freestanding sort of deck uh, is one thing when it's when it's in somebody's backyard, but this is this is like right out there. Mm -hmm. um, and and a, and the second story deck is is you know that much more. Um, I I'd rather see it be enclosed in some way. Um, it just, it just, it, to me, it, do, it just doesn't meet guidelines at, at all. It's, it really just feels like a, a free floating platform. Um, so I guess what about the, you know, the, the recommendation to make it smaller, the deck smaller in all directions so that it's cut into the roof and it's, you know, that's generally been the approach for roof balconies. Uh, well, I mean, setbacks, uh, guidelines for setbacks is what, a foot from the face and three feet from the edges? So, you know, if that were to happen here, I think that would certainly help. But it's, you know, the, the deck is going all the way out to the face um, and, and it's open rail uh, and it's going to the edges. It's all the way to one edge and it's all but you know, covering the other edge. It's such a token amount of roof plane. It's kind of silly. Mm -hmm. So Sorry. I think if it were more like, you know, a French door and flanking windows or something or one window, since they already have a double casement there or whatever that is, um, you know, one, one door that's sort of centered in the deck and bringing the, the, if, if that's something that's going to happen is this roof line thing that where the deck is set into it, it needs to get pushed back a foot and, and the sides need to come in a, a few feet on both sides. Otherwise I would get rid of that roof. It's just kind of, it's kind of ridiculous. Are you still referring to this little sliver of a roof? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I think that should be a, I think that should be three feet on both sides and one yeah. foot on the face or get rid of it. And maybe it, it could just be, you know, a shingled wall or something. I don't think we want to suggest a two-story stacked deck there. I am not a fan of a two-story stacked deck yeah. period here. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, you know, how do we, how do you make sense of it? Yeah. If it is going to happen. So here's something that I hadn't really thought about. I'm not sure it's a problem, but they're wrapping the first floor deck around, connecting the two decks. Vicki, I gotta get going. Okay, thanks for showing up, Brooke. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, uh, we're pretty much, I mean, this is the last one, right? This is the last one, yep. All right, excellent. I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so, you know, I can see that on the floor plan that this deck is a continuating around the corner. It's on the first floor. It's probably not ideal, but it's not horrible. Again, this is something that would normally happen in somebody's backyard where you, it's completely out of yeah. sight. I'm not sure she's really showing this. I guess these steps are coming off of that deck and the railing is back here. <clears throat> so I guess that is right. Where are we? Well, she's got, this. yeah, the steps are here. Not quite the way it looks, the post might be in the wrong spot. 
Oh, that, that, yeah, it's probably okay. But anyway, I'm not too concerned about the first floor. Um, so are you okay with what I said, Agus? I wasn't sure if you're trying to make that even a little tighter, but so I said the one foot sliver of roof shown in the west elevation doesn't work. The roof should be much larger and the deck smaller in both directions. So that the deck appears to be cut into the roof plane. Do you want to be more specific and say three feet on each side? Yeah, follow follow the building with Nantucket and in mind guidelines, which is three feet on the sides and one foot on the face. If this is going to be, you know, that deck put into a roof situation. Yeah, you know the, what you're referring to. I know that applies to dormers. Dormers, exactly. Yeah. But what I mean, what what else would you be referring to with a with with a porch roof? Yeah, I think I think you could construe it to be about decks too. I think it it, it would still apply. Diane, does that make sense to you? That the same thing would apply that that applies yes. to doors. It would apply to a deck being cut into a, a roof plane. Yes. We try and do that. Yes, I think it would be, be a good idea. Yeah, that makes total sense. Take my book with me. It's a roof plane. And it's whether it's a dormer or a deck, it, has, it should have similar. Because um, it's all about preserving the integrity of the roof that is being cut into. And if it just is like all the way across and all the way forward, then you're really losing the meaning of that roof. Got it. Yep. <clears throat> Agreed. That never doesn't do anything. Nothing. <clears throat> so. Yeah, it's kind of token. Um, all right. Any other comments on this one? No. All right. I think we're good here. Um, all right. What is this chat? Okay. Brooke said leave. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So I'll take a motion from Lucy to accept the comments. Yes. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. And we can adjourn <clears throat> without a motion, I think. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mickey. All right. Bye, Diane. Thanks, Thanks Diane. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for your information. Sure. Bye-bye. <clears throat>